Hello YouTube, welcome to today's video. Today I wanted to cover sketchbooks, so if you're looking at getting started with art and don't know what sketchbook you should start with, or if you're finishing your current book and want some inspiration of what to try next, hopefully this video will be helpful to you. It can be tricky to know where to start, with a sketch pad or a sketchbook, drawing paper, plain paper or tone paper, or whether you want to delve into watercolour pads you have the option of cold press paper or hot press paper. And then we also have watercolour sketchbooks. And the other thing to consider is what size you'd like. Would you like a small sketchbook like this little moleskin one? Or would you like a larger sketchbook? There are mixed media sketchbooks, spiral bound, hard bound. There are so many options and I'm going to cover off all of these sketchbooks in this video today. And hopefully this will give you some information and give you an idea of where to start. So let's take a closer look. So let's start with drawing paper. This first sketchbook is a cartridge paper sketchbook by Winsor & Newton. This one here is spiral bound. We have the Canson drawing paper. This here is a paper pad. And we also have the options of having white paper or we also have tone paper like we do with this Strathmore tone grey paper. This one also comes in tan as well. Something to consider is whether you would rather your sketches be kept contained within a sketchbook or whether you would like to remove the pages from a paper pad and store them in a plastic sleeve folder. So I found that this cartridge sketchbook takes graphite, charcoal, pen and ink and that kind of thing really well. I've got a few just graphite sketches here. Um, this paper is quite thick so it's thicker than a regular plain paper sketchbook. So I tested out and did this piece for Inktober last year. One thing I found was that it did not take bottled ink very well and I mean that in the sense that it just the black ink didn't come out particularly black. No matter how much ink I added, the black ink just didn't go very black at all. It just stayed that grey kind of colour. Um, this here is watercolour gouache hybrid paint. These came out nice and vibrant and with very minimal buckling. So just another thing to consider when looking at these sketchbooks. Okay, let's have a look at this Strathmore toned grey paper. This paper is lighter weight than the last one um, and it's got a grey tone to the paper. This piece was actually done with coloured pencils and I've lined it with um, just regular fine liners. That was a piece I did for Inktober. What I love about the grey tone paper is that it's already established your mid-tone for you. So you can go straight in with your whites, your white charcoal pencils, your white gel pens and you get this really effective look. This paper will also take light washes of ink and watercolour that I found. There is some buckling of course but I think that adds character to your sketchbooks. This one I used fine liners, white gel pen, and the fine tech gold and purple and red in the flowers. I'm just addicted to that stuff. The next sketchbooks I want to talk about here are like mixed media sketchbooks to me. Um, these ones are from a company called Inkscribe. Um, this first one was just a lighter weight paper version of the other one on the right. I filled this sketchbook last year and it was great just to experiment and get down some ideas. I love that it seemed to be able to handle watercolour, alcohol markers, but as you can see there is a lot of warping in this book. Um, again, I don't really mind that due to it adding character, but it might be something you would rather avoid. Um, I did find this sketchbook had some issues with some watercolours. It handled some watercolour better than others, so it's very, very important to do your swatches. Um, and I'm going to go over swatching at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Um, this sketchbook is the heavier version, and so far it's holding up really nicely with less warping than the first book anyway. Um, I tested it out with some similar pieces to the ones I did last year, and I have found it to be better. And I've learned from the last book what supplies don't work, so I'll know to avoid them. Um, this piece was a lot of layers, um, as same as this one here, very similar to the other mermaid in the other book. And I found that there was definitely less warping and I probably used about the same amount of layers. 
So I guess that's something else to consider with your sketchbooks. You know, what materials are you predominantly going to use? Um, for example, if it's watercolor you're using, you might want to look at watercolor books. So I'm going to show you these watercolor sketchbooks and sketch pads here. We have this Aquafine one from Dale Rowney, and these are cold press sketchbooks. Um, I'm going to show you or try to show you the texture here in these books. Um, generally hot uh, sorry cold press is a little bit better for um, beginners because you have longer to blend and that kind of thing on these papers I am addicted to that Archer's watercolor paper um, these ones here are from Fabriano these ones are hot pressed watercolor paper and hot press means that the paper is smooth sometimes that can be trickier to blend on but I actually haven't had any problems with those ones so again do you want sketch pads where you can take the pages out or would you prefer a little sketchbook like these little Stillman and Burn ones so I have this one here this one is also a hot press paper I've done a little swatch sheet at the back here and it's quite small um, and I'm going to show you a little drawing here this one even though it is a hot press paper so it's smooth it has this really interesting texture when you lay down the paint, something I haven't really seen in some other papers. Uh, this one here is a little moleskin sketchbook. Um, I have been testing out this paper just using my Daniel Smith dot sheets of watercolour. This is really great if you wanted to start out with watercolour. I spoke about this in my watercolour video. Um, and I'm basically seeing how much of this book I can fill up <laughs> just using those dot sheets. Although that one has the fine tech gold on it as well. And we also have a another Stillman and Burn sketchbook here. This one is a spiral bound book, as you can see, and it's a slightly thicker paper to the first one. And another thing you'll notice is that like the moleskin sketchbook, this one is actually like a cream colored. So it's an off white. It's not pure white. So that's something else to be mindful of, whether you want a pure white sketchbook like this first Stillman and Burn, or whether you don't mind the off-white colour like the Moleskin and the Delta series Stillman and Burn. Now, if you don't just use watercolour paper, another sketchbook you might consider, and I think this is such a good way to start, is mixed media sketchbooks. These ones will take watercolour, generally, acrylic, pencil, pastel, um, some markers as well. So let's have a closer look at these. I love these Strathmore mixed media sketchbooks. These are my all time favorite, this particular one here. Um, I'm going to show you some little ink sketches I did. Um, these have a lovely hard cover at the front and back. And these sketches are from Inktober 2017. Um, all of these ones are from the movie <laughs> It, um, the book by Stephen King. I love that movie and I was just trying to do all of Inktober and it was a great way to go because I could draw all seven of the children and Pennywise and a few other characters. So that got me quite a few pages done. Um, I love how black you can get the blacks with the ink and you can use water to lighten down your tones. So I really love mixed media sketchbooks, especially this one. I just think that the paper is really nice and um, as you can see, very minimal warping compared to some of the other books. These ones are also 100% cotton, which if you know watercolour paper, you know that that is the holy grail of watercolour paper is 100% cotton. We also have these Strathmore Vision Mixed Media Sketchbooks. Um, these ones have a customizable cover. So when we take away the first cover here, we see a light bluey gray kind of color. And this one is like a mixed media kind of paper. It's a little bit thicker and you can paint on it with gouache. You can go on it with colored pencils. I actually have a smaller version of this book here and I painted my own cover. I kind of leave the other one on there to protect it, but you know, I gave it a go. <laughs> um, so I've used watercolor gouache hybrid paint and I've also used some colored pencils, some white gel pen and my fine tech gold. The only thing I'm not sure of is if those ones are 100% cotton like the first one. 
This is the other sketchbook amongst the mixed media. This one's very popular. This is the Canson XL mixed media sketchbook. This one I have found that the paper is a little bit thinner, it feels to me. It's not quite as textured. Um, this one here says you can use it for acrylic, watercolour, pen and pencil. I've not tried acrylic in it to be honest with you, but I've definitely tried all of the other things. Um, as you can see there is some warping to this paper, but again nothing that's really troublesome at all. I've done a few watercolour sketches, I've done my swatches here of my watercolor gouache hybrid paint I'm addicted to swatching these days and I'll give some reasons as to why I think that's a really good idea um, these were some ink sketches I had done for inktober 2017 from memory um, and I've also used some Copic markers on that one as well so what I wanted to show you here was I think that these books are really great for Copic markers of course, like anything except for the render sketchbooks, um, the, the markers are going to come through to the other side. Again, I don't think this is really a problem. Um, what I would do was, would be to paint over that with either watercolour ground or maybe some gesso and that page would be totally usable. Now, as promised, let's discuss swatching. This is something I do with any new sketchbook. I like to swatch out my art supplies and I do this for a few reasons. Number one, it's a great way to fill up the first page of your sketchbook. I have this ridiculous fear of the first page and up until last year, as a rule, I would never draw on the first page, which is a waste of a page. So now I swatch to fill in the first page with that rainbow of colors. Reason number two, which we can see here, is that it gives you an indication if your paper can handle what you throw at it and if there are gonna be any issues like there was with the gouache there rubbing off onto the other side of the paper. Um, <clears throat> reason number three that I'm going to demonstrate now with this new watercolor sketchbook is kind of similar to the first reason in that you can test out your supplies um, that might work perfectly in your old sketchbook but interact differently on the new paper of your new sketchbook. Um, with this example it's blending so what I've done here is I've drawn out a grid of 1.5 centimeter squares and I'm swatching out some Kuretake watercolor brush pens. I found on this paper that these were quite tricky to blend and I actually end up swatching them out twice. Um, the reason I did that was I wanted to see if by applying different techniques I could get them to blend a little bit easier. So this paper worked um, for regular watercolour, it's 100% cotton, cold press um, and it's nice thick 300 GSM paper. Um, what I've done is I've coloured the first half of the square and I'm going in with a wet brush with just plain water and I'm trying to blend out those colors. The first row I had let them sit on the paper before I blended them out. For the second row I've attempted to blend them out straight away and then towards the end of the line I actually added water to the page first. I still found it a little bit tricky to blend. So what I'm showing you here is blending these same markers and in the same fashion, but in my Inkscribe sketchbook. Um, and as you'll see, this was a lot easier for me. It's, it's no comment on the quality of the markers. Honestly, paper is such a huge factor in the performance of your art supplies. So this is why swatching is so important and why I totally believe in the sacrificial page, as I call it. It's better to test out your art supplies before you start your lovely artwork, only to start struggling because your supplies don't mesh well um, and that is key especially for beginners who might think that they're doing something wrong when in reality it's just the supplies um, and I would hate to see someone give up just because of that. Um, I, I know it can be overwhelming with the amount of choices out there so I hope that this video was helpful and answered some questions and helps you decide what's the best type of sketchbook for you. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And until next video, have a good week. By the way, I'll also list the sketchbooks in the description. Um, no affiliate links though, just the supplies.